All right. So, hello, good afternoon, and welcome uh, to my talk on uh, spec benchmarks and various hopefully interesting results. Um, we or I, over the um, last few years, basically run benchmarks um, three times a year. Once to evaluate how well newly released major GCC is, um, major version of GCC is doing. And then in winter and in summer, I run it again uh, to see where we are and to plan our work for the upcoming half year and uh, in the area of spec, I mean. And uh, yeah, when the call for papers uh, and call for participation arrived, I was just looking at the some results and I was also working uh, on speeding up one of the benchmarks. So I thought that it might be an interesting uh, topic for a talk. So here it is. And uh, its structure, if I can change the slides, yeah, will be a brief introduction for those of you who are not looking at spec results every week or every month even. A quick look at the result or some of the results uh, from the summer and an invitation for you to look at more if you'd like. And uh, then I will talk about how we are, we've been trying to speed up one, a little bit strange, but um, nevertheless, a benchmark of the spec suite. So what is spec? Um, when we talk, at least um, in, in, in our team about spec benchmark, we usually or almost always mean spec CPU benchmarks. Uh, we still run benchmarks from, from, from the suite from 2006 because we do not want to regress there either. But uh, of course, the most important suite is now the current one from year 2017. And uh, these benchmarks are released by a standardizing body. Um, but it is a benchmark suite that is intended to evaluate computer systems and uh, not compilers or not just compilers, because of course compilers are an important part of the system. But uh, nevertheless, they are often used to evaluate how well compilers optimize the, the benchmarks, mostly because the benchmarks are well known and uh, most of them at least, if not all of them, are fairly reasonably chosen. And um, But when we at least do so, we intentionally violate various rules that people who try to you know, produce an official spec result for their computer systems cannot do. Um, so I need to warn you that all results in this talk or in the paper or Basically, everything, all, all the results that we produce are so called non reportable, inofficial. Uh, we violate very, various rules. And we even patch the benchmarks uh, to make all, all, almost all of them adhere to strict aliasing. Uh, I'm not sure if, or if two or three benchmarks have a problem that their quick sort implementation um, is. The, does not follow strict aliasing rules. It is just one function that we uh, basically mark as such and with an optimizing attribute, and we compile the rest with strict aliasing because strict aliasing is an important way how compilers can deduce what they can optimize and what they cannot. Um, and there are, and to fix other problems, for example, after the suite was released, people realized that photonic uh, tolerance to rounding errors was way too strict for the purposes of being a benchmark. Uh, we do want to build all the benchmarks with now default FNO common. And uh, we have made other small tweaks, although this is almost all of them. Each benchmark suite meaning both 2017 and 2006 CPU suite 
actually is too sweet. One to evaluate integer uh, workloads and uh, one to evaluate how a computer system or a compiler, in our case, can optimize floating point programs. Um, and these are the benchmarks in each of the suites. So you can see that GCC itself, or an older version of GCC, is part of both 2017 and 2006. Uh, we have a benchmark based on the Perl interpreter. Uh, MCF is a vehicle scheduling program. This is a simulation of a gigabit Ethernet network. Zalan CBMK is an XSLT parser in C++. You probably know that X264 is a video codec. Deepsyang, or Deepsyang, I don't know how it is pronounced actually, is a chess program. Leela is a Go playing engine. Exchange, which we will be talking about, is a helper to create Sudoku puzzles. And XSZ is a compression and decompression um, program that you might know, might be using. I will not go over the rest of these, but you know, on the floating point side, you probably know the Image Magic, uh, image manipulation program. Blender is a well-known uh, 3D uh, modeling program. But most of these are actually scientific scientific calculations. So WRF is a weather forecasting engine. B waves is a simulation of blast waves. Uh, NAMD is a biomolecular simulation. BAMEST is also some medical imaging uh, programs. So, so these are mostly scientific programs. And uh, these are all of them. For each benchmark, we run it or we compile it with different compilers and different options and then run it three times and select the median uh, a median and um, and we arrive uh, at having very many results these are some of the results for one benchmark x264 it's only those uh, that have been compiled with OFAST. We have quite a few more that use O2. Uh, it, is, it is a little bit more than usual because it, uh, on this graph, we there are results from Clung 10 and also the first release candidate of Clung 11. We normally just have j j just benchmark single Clung, uh, but because of the situation with the LLVM this summer, uh, we have both. Um, but yeah, there are two results, and these are results just from a single computer, from uh, AMDs and two-based server. And uh, we always try to have at results from also a recent Intel machine, and sometimes even from two uh, different AMD machines. So um, yeah, we then happen to have a lot of numbers. And in, though, in that pile of numbers, we need to look for problems, basically. So regressions from previous versions, um, especially when using new machines, new architectures, those you know, might have escaped continuous uh, benchmarking that I will be also talking about. Uh, we want to look at regressions from less powerful optimization options. So when uh, a non-LTO build is faster than an LTO build, we want to have a look why that is, uh, for example. And uh, we, of course, although that is often very tricky, do comparisons with other compilers and look for conspicuous differences where they're better and see whether we could do anything about it. And uh, But yeah, the, the, these are not all the results and uh, there are this many benchmarks. So even though we started just by putting it into a LibreOffice spreadsheet, we, I was quickly forced to come up with the script that would help me process the results. And over a few iterations, 
I arrived at a script that now currently generates uh, HTML reports. And uh, normally we use one with has all the data in it, and that is accessible from the engineering network if you have access to it. But uh, I because mostly because I do not want people to be comparing um, results across different machines. I also tweaked the script so that it produced um, so that it produces results which I am more happy to talk about publicly, such as now. These are now pushed, the results from the summer benchmarking are pushed to uh, this page. And uh, the difference is that only the times are either presented relative to each other as a percentage of some other time, or um, when in, in bar graphs, basically the worst time is set to 500 on each machine and the rest is scaled accordingly. And um, now I will try to uh, share my screen and actually don't go over the next three or four slides, but show them on my screen. Let's see how it goes. And uh, all right, can people see my browser? Not yet. It did work. I oh, know it. Uh, let me try again. Take a few moments. Yeah, we can now. All right. So this is the landing page, index HTML, basically. Uh, on the left hand side, there are comparisons of the whole suites with different options. On the right hand side, this is what we will begin with. There are reports on individual results from individual benchmarks. So uh, um, a little while ago, we were looking at X264. So I will open it up. And uh, yeah, it seems that you can see too. And these are all the results with the time, normalized times on the right side and uh, sizes on the left side coming from the one machine, the Zen 2 based Rome. Uh, server, and then we have results, again, all of them, uh, actually more of them, because we also vectorize with 512-bit vector uh, vectors uh, from Intel Cascade Lake machine. This is just too many to look at, so over here at the begin, uh, at the top of the page, you can select what you want to see, so if we switched off if we switch off all the O2 results, you can see that we are now having a graph that um, that looks like very much what you saw on my slides. And um, this is still too many, so often the most convenient thing is to probably just look at LT LTO OFAST. OFAST. Uh, um, na native compilation. And what you can see that, for example, in, on Intel Cascade Lake Xeon, the GCC7 was not very good at optimizing this benchmark. That's because the benchmark is very uh, sensitive to vectorizing. And uh, one of the examples in my LabsConf talk two years ago was actually on how GCC8 uh, was much better at vectorizing this particular benchmark. So as you can see, it improved a lot. On That's not the whole story, on the other hand. On GCC8, on Zen, improved a lot. 
as you can see over here, but then GCC9 was actually worse. And the reason is that GCC9 is the first compiler that knows about Zen 2. Previous compilers, uh, GCC 8, 7, and even 6, uh, treat it as a Zen 1, which means that they vec prefer to vectorize using 128 bit vectors and not 256, which the newest Zens are able to process natively or without splitting them into halves now. And uh, that was actually problematic for this benchmark because many of the loops do not need uh, or do not have that many iterations to, for the vectorization to be actually actually beneficial. And uh, one of the biggest improvements in optimization in GCC 10 is that uh, GCC can can also vectorize the so-called epilogues, which were you know, the, the, the bit, bit of, of the loop which can not be vectorized using the full width of uh, the uh, of the vector is now can be vectorized using smaller vectors which helps the benchmark and assembly so this is one of the biggest improvements in GCC 10 when it comes to spec um, because GCC does not do vectorization at O2 showing you O2 results on this benchmark is not really interesting, but we can have a look at, yeah, for example, the, the first ones where um, if we just select the LTO or fast native, and um, please stop me if there are any problems with, with, with the video. I'm not, I don't currently see the, the, the big blue button screen, but hopefully everything is okay. And, um, as you can see, the comparison uh, looks rather nice for, for, for GCC at O2. Now, this is OFAST native. I, was, oh, I wanted O2 generic, but with LTO. And uh, still, the situation is very nice. One thing to emphasize, though, is that if you use profile guided optimization, you can often do much better, especially when it comes to programs uh, such as interpreters, such as Perl. Um, another thing that I have on my list is uh, B-Waves, which is a floating point benchmark. And let's select just uh, the the uh, GCC 10 and 9 and uh, standard OFAST native, which is a regression. As I was saying, one of the goals of the whole exercise is identify regressions. This one is actually um, a fallout from the epilogue vectorization where we currently, where the code that that also produces vectorized epilogue in B waves creates register pressure that is just too high and leads to spills and um, and slowdowns. Fortunately, it is not a problem when you, you know, when you for PGO neither, but even whether you LTO, uh, the necessary iteration counts are propagated interprocedurally and uh, the benchmark runs fast. Nevertheless, this is something we are looking at and we hope to still address um, in the upcoming month. Um, sometimes, however, we see issues or we see regressions that look very, very badly, uh, but they are not quite real problems. Uh, the most famous example in spec 2006 is probably Calculix, um, which is a floating point, um, a floating point benchmark. And um, let's select nothing and uh, we'll do LTO and PGO LTO at O fast and native. And as you can see, the LTO code, so 
the the when not using profile guided optimization is much faster, more 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 than twice fa as fast as the more powerful optimization method, and the same thing for Intel. The reason is simply that the train run uh, provided by spec is very bad. The hottest loop is not part of the train run. The hottest loop is optimized for size and not for speed. And uh, yeah, that's how you can easily um, end up with fairly bad results with PGO, even though the profile guided optimization when the train run is at least somewhat good uh, can help you a lot. Another thing where we also thought that we were looking at very weird, peculiar, and fairly big regression is uh, Soplex, which is a simplex algorithm, where if we, again, just look at trunk and uh, when we compare at OFAST, you know, tuning for a gener generic x86-64 machine and a native on both machines, but especially on, on uh, Zen 2, the native tuning is much worse. The reason for this is the structure of the benchmark. Basically, the algorithm, the whole program, um, or, or, or the hot loops iterate until a result converges. But with uh, when using faster mathematical floating point instructions, the rounding errors cause the convergence to be much slower. So it takes many more iterations of the algorithm to converge. So that's basically a property of the program and of the world, so to speak, that in this particular case, uh, or, or in such cases, the native tuning can actually slow you down. There's uh, not too much that you can do about it in the compiler. You are, of course, welcome to have a look at any of the individual benchmark results. There are too many to go over in this talk. Uh, over here on the left, we have comparisons across the whole suites. So the whole CPU in trade with, you know, with a selection of compilers and options, then the whole spec 2017 FP rate, and the same for 2006 integer and floating point versions of the, or, or additions uh, of the spec CPU suite. In each talk, we try to um, show people that they really should consider using LTO and PGO, like I've been already doing, I believe. But nevertheless, let's have a look at uh, how LTO and LTO PGO helps. So this is what comparison of a whole suite uh, looks like. Basically, you, what we are comparing to the baseline is the normal compilation at O2, um, and normal means without LTO, without PGO, and uh, that's 100%. And uh, in all the results, in as you probably have already noticed, in, in all the results in this talk, the, the, the smaller numbers are better. This basically means that Perl Bench, when you use both LTO and PGO, runs almost well 14% faster uh, than uh, when you do not use any of those. So, so small is good, and green is good. When you have a look at uh, executable sizes, the situation is very similar. Um, yeah. We, we will be talking about exchange. We we are still looking at exchange. Exchange is often an, an, an outlier in a problematic case, but but we are working on it. And the situation is similar on uh, Xeon. Yeah, this is the same thing at OFAST. Actually, only much better. Basically, green is good. That's boring, but good. 
and uh, yeah, the message is if you can use LTO and PGO, it is probably a very good idea to do that. And uh, these are the floating point results. Um, WRF is a known problem, but it seems to be the problem with the, the profile being corrupted over the case of the spec run. Uh, but even in floating point benchmarks, some of the benefits of using both LTO and PGO can be quite substantial. We, of course, do comparisons with all the releases. And um, so let's have a look at the integer one, for example. Let's, yes, pick the O2, but with LTO, uh, mostly because this is how the majority of tumbleweed packages are being built now and what we hope to be using or plan to be using for the future. And uh, as you can see, there are some red dashes, but basically any regression that's about 2% is probably the noise. Uh, there, have, there has been one big improvement in, in, in GCC uh, 10 time frame which is deep Yang, uh, that's because of improved pop count uh, detection and implementation, and also CTZ, uh, which is, uh, which is um, Count trailing zeros, yeah, implemented counts basically the how how many zeros are there at uh, at the un, until the first least significant uh, one in a, a given word, and that helped a lot the the, the chess playing program. The situation on Intel Cascade Lake is again similar. We also, as I said, compare. GCC with um, other compilers, and uh, we do compare um, GCC also with uh, ICC on AMD CPUs, which is a little bit weird, and you might say unfair because, yeah, ICC uh, was probably never really intended to optimize super well for them. Nevertheless, the ICC compiler is well known for doing high level optimization as well as well, uh, which means various necessary loop transformations and especially um, vectorization. So we uh, do that comparison as well. Uh, that's why over here in, in, in the group, I'm not sure if you can see the, the, uh, the, my cursor, but basically in the group that compares ICC um, against GCC, uh, you can see the options using AVX2 because that's how we simulate the native target uh, on ICC and, uh, or, or exhaust, which is what we, which is basically the direct equivalent of uh, March native, M2 native on, on ICC. We can have a look at how we are, um, uh, how we are doing, for example, on the AMD machines, which recently interest people more usually. And uh, the overall result is actually quite nice. This is without, uh, this is at OFAST, uh, and because we generally only compare against other compilers at OFAST because the meeting of uh, other optimization levels is not quite the same and directly comparable. Uh, and, and, and given that our results are, are, are quite nice, it is also nice that our ex executable sizes are much smaller. Uh, 
ICC is known to be optimizing much more, um, much more um, aggressively with LTO. Um, so the situation is not as nice with LTO, but the real problem is actually exchange. And that's something we'll talk about in a bit. Um, before jumping to floating point, let's actually have a look. What is the situations in the uh, in the integer spec benchmarks when we compare our GCC with Clang? And uh, just need to find the right Clang. The problem with Clang is that uh, it does not yet have a functional. Fortran front end, and now there is even one Fortran benchmark exchange, uh, even in the integer suite, and uh, yeah, that makes it slightly problematic. Um, if we have a look at uh, fast, I see that there are some. Compiler errors, which I do not remember, which is weird when I was preparing this talk. Um, let me have a, let me see if I can. Sometimes, yeah, even the list of the comparisons is so big that, 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 that finding the right thing is not, not easy. But yeah, this is the one this is the one that I wanted to that I wanted to click originally. And uh, as you can see, exchange cannot be compared, but apart from that, GCC on the integer benchmarks is doing uh, fairly nicely. Uh, DPN is the one exception, and uh, it is even more visible when we look at, no, again, the same mistake. Uh, when we look at uh, the same results with LTO, but we did look at this regression some time ago and uh, at that point we believe that well we i did find out that it was due to a condition due to a jump uh, being converted into a conditional move but in a case which does not seem to be universally beneficial so it does help because of what data uh, are uh, fed into the algorithm in this particular case, but uh, we were not certain that it would actually help majority of our users. And of course, the goal, even when using spec for us, is not to obtain the best possible spec numbers, but uh, to you know use those benchmarks to actually um, make a better compiler. But nevertheless, in when it comes to integer benchmarks, GCC is doing nicely against ICC and, and, and both Clung. With floating point, uh, the competition is much more stronger. If we have a look at ICC, which traditionally is very good at, uh, at optimizing floating point code, um, and let's have a look at directly at LTO. Uh, it is strange that we are so much better with Photonic, and I believe that that is the case even, uh, even on Intel Cascade Lake. So it's not something where, where we would where just ICC would be terrible on, 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 on sense. But this is the one benchmark where we are surprisingly much better than, than ICC. Surprisingly, because ICC, to a big extent, is uh, 
the spec compiler for Intel processors. So one of the big goals, I assume, for the developers of the of the compiler is actually to arrive at the best possible benchmark numbers. Uh, but yeah, the, we, there's still some catching up that we have to do and that we are working on uh, all the time. When we do a similar comparison with uh, Klung and uh, and this time, I, yeah, let me, you know, what we what we see I'm already directly opened LTO now. What we see is that uh, yeah, there are some cases where we need to be. Um, uh, where, where we need, need to have a look at um, what is uh, actually what Clunk might be doing better. Uh, we are already looking at NAMD. Some of the, or at least one of these results might not be real though. The LBM is a benchmark which does which happens to be jumping up and down a lot over here. I opened the individual benchmark comparison and I enabled also GCC 10. As you can see, GCC 10 is basically on par with Klung. It's just something that happened on trunk and that may or may not be a real issue. I have not had a look at it yet. Uh, so, so, so at least one of these green, uh, one, of, one of these red numbers probably isn't or, or might not actually be red. And I could go on and on forever. Uh, but uh, time is limited, so this is the URL, and um, this is what I invite you to have a look if you're interested, or the other URL in the slides um, where you can have a look. One or two sentences about our periodic benchmarker. Again, the URL is in the in the uh, in the slides. We do have one. And uh, it, its goal is to check as many um, commits for regressions as possible. Um, it, it, it just keeps going, so I do not want to take one of its machines for follow-up uh, follow uh, examination when there are problems. That's why we also do things manually. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, we do have that. But let me now go back to my slides. And uh, we have covered all of this. And we'll switch gears and have a look at how we've been, we've been, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I know I'm slowly running out of time. Uh, it's not too many slides, actually. How, how we, we've been trying to address a, a problem with exchange, mostly regressions, but also, as I showed you, ICC with LTO can be so much faster. And um, so, yeah, and the problem is the exchange, which I talked about. It is a helper to create pseudo puzzles. It is the only Fortran integer benchmark, and it is a very weird one at that. It basically has one hot function uh, where the program spends all its time, which has very or fairly deep loop nest, and but but big um, consisting of big loops and uh, a recursive call uh, at the bottom of the deep loop nest. So the outline, oops, the outline of the Hot function called digits two is something like the following. Uh, I had to use the smallest font and that LaTeX offered me, but hopefully you can still see it, even though it did not fit on the slide. But, but basically, there's loop nest that is eight loops deep, and um, and over here uh, there is a recursive call. So of course the loops cannot loop too many times, otherwise the program would never stop. But the region is hot and at O fast loop optimizations and vectorizer, you know, tend to be rather more active and aggressive in hot regions. 
Um, so that had to be tuned down, and GCC uses the presence of the recursive call to actually inform the program that this cannot be um, this region, and, and, and because of that, all the other regions cannot be executing too often, otherwise the program would never finish. Uh, still, the various loop optimiz optimizers are active and produce a lot of code, which again can quickly increase register pressure. And you know, I always only put ten codes of code here, ten codes of code here, nine, eight lines of sorry, lines of code here, eight lines of code here. But the one one of those lines is a block copy, which itself is a loop. So 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 there are small loops over here. And these ones are actually quite interesting because the R next is can be derived from rho. So if we knew what the value of rho is, and it begins with one and then is increased by one, uh, we could compile these loops much better because we would know how many iterations there are. And that's basically the idea of optimizing this benchmark. Uh, GCC even currently knows that the first value is one, and then it is incremented in the call in the recursive call. Um, GCC ten can do it even in Fortran, where everything is passed by reference. And the idea is basically to come up with eight clones and the original function. Each one will be specialized for the value of the parameter, which means that all those loops will now no, have known number of iterations and will be will be allowed to run, run much faster and causing causing much less damage when optimizing them and because of um fang Tzu, if i remember correctly from from ampere computing uh gcc can actually do this when you feed it these crazy parameters and if you're interested what is actually important uh it's this clone, the D4, uh, is the most important one. That's where the benchmark then spends 81% of the time. That's specialization for value 4. And 7% in the specialization for value 7. All the rest, these clones and all the other functions in the, uh, in the benchmark run for fewer than 1% of the total runtime of the, of, of the function. So the basic idea is that we will track which known which parameter if it's if its value is known would make a loop iteration count known and uh, gcc already does this it uh, it uh, but it is only a yes or no are there any loops that have constant iteration count or or no so uh, we added the capability to count not, not really just how many, but how often a loop will be executed with a known iteration count. And if there are very many, then uh, we will, you know, teach, we, we taught the heuristics to be more likely to do the clones. Uh, but cloning heuristics takes not only that, uh, you know, the benefit to a single invocation of the function into account, but also the estimated frequency. And that was actually because of the trick with the recursive call, the estimated frequency of calls, which was, was too small. So we had to tweak that. And uh, that was partially by mistake, but, but we had to be tweaked that. The optimization pass had to be taught that for small limits, it can grow the compilation unit a little bit more. Um, and the good news is that all the all uh, the <laughs> uh, all, all the bench uh, the, all of these things have been committed recently in August or last week. Uh, the situation needs to be re-evaluated because of other things that are happening on truck and trunk, um, especially the IPA mod draft, which which changes a lot of stuff. But nevertheless. Uh, we hope to fix at least the regressions, and we know that uh, with some tweaking of some other parameters, we can be as fast as ICC. Uh, so after evaluating the situation, that's our goal, but the exchange should be much faster, and the reported regressions should not be nearly as big, and uh, we do not need to limit the uh, vectorizer in, 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 in some other way. 
Um, yeah, so I see that there is one question about whether this is a trick to cheat a benchmark. Uh, the answer is yes, but. And uh, the but is that we do believe that this capability of the optimizer to take into account uh, better what happens to loops in a function that uh, is a candidate for cloning will be useful to other Fortran programs. So yes, this is uh, especially taken into account that, you know, something that a compiler cannot kind of figure out that this is the important note. Uh, yes, this is a trick. Nevertheless, what we are adding to the compiler is not just something to fix a regression or not just a trick that others do, but also a useful capability that should help the heuristics in more normal cases. And uh, thank you. I'm afraid I do not have too, too much time for questions, but, but maybe I don't know if you can go over time a few minutes. I'll be happy to answer anything now or later on. We have to, we can take a few minutes. Uh, there, first, there was a discussion about if we recommend our customers to uh, actually rebuild uh, the binaries with optimization, optimization and use them instead of ours, which is, the answer is probably no. And uh, I kind of doubt that you are the right person to ask. I think that I, the answer is almost always no. I, I don't know about HPC, uh, and and I think that the the workloads that they actually care about are workloads that they do understand that they intend to build themselves. But I think that generally the answer is no. Uh, what we could do is yeah perhaps think of providing some some packages optimized better for for some platforms and 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 other versions for others. But that's another. Yeah, that, 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 that's our topic. Yeah, then there was question about the statistics evaluation of the results, uh, meaning uh, computing standard deviation, p-value, and so on. But that was also already clarified. Yeah, and there is another question from Rodion. Uh, could you please share challenges you have faced on hardware side to normalize the results and reduce noise as if not done properly? Some side processes can consume CPU cycles so that they would influence the results. So why are... uh, So basically, yeah, uh, so, so just some side process consuming cycles, I think that that actually can be eliminated, eliminated by running the benchmark three times and taking the median. And uh, if, if, if something, if, if, if the result is unexpected, uh, then, you know, taking the measurement again, I cross check with the periodic benchmark uh, always uh, too. Uh, the bigger challenge are things like where the speed of the code depends, for example, on its position, on, 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 on its address, where we have seen on Zen 1, an issue with one of the benchmarks, which was 20% slower if we moved the function a little bit in memory. Uh, yeah, uh, I think Mel also encountered similar problems in some kernel benchmark where uh, the result of specific benchmarks was kind of random depending on where a function land landed modulo eight in the memory. Yeah, I think I think that was very very small memset or something like that. That, that that that's another problem. But yeah, that's it's a similar and that can happen. And eliminating eliminating that. Well, we eliminated this one uh, by basically pattern matching it and 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 replacing it with a call to memset, if I remember correctly. But Matt Fleming exactly was was one researching this in kernel where they can just replace it with a call to glibcy, um, and. Uh, so, so that one was avoided, but yeah, the randomness in the measurements is a problem. Fortunately, it seems that it's a problem only for a few benchmarks. Uh, the answer would be to measure them gazillion times, but the run times are already fairly big. It takes me seven hours to run one C C one CPU suite, the both floating point and integer with one compiler and one set of uh, uh, optimization options. 
So, you know, doing that 100 times is not really, and that's three times, so, so, so doing that 100 times is not really exactly an option. Uh, so yeah, that is a problem, and there we have to basically look at, well, that's LPM, we have to take the results with a grain of salt, but fortunately it's a problem only for a few benchmarks. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, I suggest if there are more uh, questions to move them to the discussion rooms, because we have uh, 10 minutes to the next talk. So thanks, Martin. And Thank you very much. Let's stop the recording.